Hello, this is Dr. Donna Pelto. I want to talk today about uh, hammer toes. And here you can see an example of before and after type of hammer toes. There's a lot of different types we're going to look at today. Uh, hammer toes can have these little knobby calluses on them from rubbing on, on the shoes. Uh, typically, if you look at the anatomy, this is going to be the proximal interphalangeal joint, the proximal joint, and this is the distal joint. And most of them, when they're curved down, they're going to cause rubbing on the sides of the shoe. So let's look a little bit more at the causes of hammer toes. To keep it simple, uh, a hammer toe is caused by a mechanical instability in the foot. So uh, the foot is either unstable because it's very flat, or the tendons are pulling harder on one side than the other. This can cause the tendons to contract the toes, as you can see in these toes right here. And it can also cause them to swivel to the side. In conjunction with this are uh, issues called like a plantar plate tear. A plantar plate is, causes it to kind of um, move over to the side. If you want to learn more about plantar plate tears, uh, up on the top of the screen, there's going to be a little link to learn more about plantar plate tears. Typically, that is quite painful on the bottom of the ball of the foot as well. It's not just the hammer toe. It's in conjunction with that. Uh, there's a lot of anatomy that you have to look at. There is a the metatarsal phalangeal joint right here, which tends to be painful with hammer toes if it's cocked up too much. There is a proximal and then a distal interphalangeal joint that get affected. And here's an example of a, of a hammer toe. One of the most important aspects of looking at your hammer toe is if it's flexible or rigid. And the way you test that is you take the toe, and if you can straighten it totally out, it's a flexible hammer toe. If you can't straighten it, there's been arthritis that's developed in the joint, either one or both of the joints, and this is more of a rigid problem. When it becomes rigid, it, it becomes a little bit more problematic because it rubs more on the shoes and it can also rub on the tips creating calluses or even sores or ulcers on the bottom of the tip of the toe. So the first thing you have to do is determine if it's flexible or rigid because uh, if you can, if it becomes painful it usually is more of a rigid deformity and it can become problematic. So how do we diagnose this? We would get an x-ray, we would evaluate your foot and see is you have pain only on the bump like right here, or do you have pain underneath the metatarsal head as well? And then do you have a callus either down here or up here? And even do you have a, a sore or an ulcer? Uh, one thing that's important to look at is something called retrograde force. And you can see that on an x-ray, you can see that the, the toe is kind of cocked up at the proximal interphalangeal joint. It's kind of cocked down here with the toe. And because of that, every time that you walk, there's going to be retrograde force on that metatarsal head. That's why a lot of people have pain down into the ball of the foot with these hammer toes. Some of the non-surgical treatments that people find, you can try shoes that are extra depth or shoes that are extra wide. A wide shoe can help and also a very, very deep shoe can help. And also be aware you want to get a, a shoe with a type of a flexible fabric. Uh, shoes that have seams or even this hard plastic on the side can become uh, more problematic for the patients. Some people like different types of splints. There are uh, pads called a crest pad. This pad sits underneath the toes and helps lift them up a little bit. This can help for sores or calluses on the tips. It can help a little bit. You can also try some pads. These pads can go on the area where you're having uh, the rubbing. So that, that could go on this toe, for example. These are little gel pads. They have a, a little sock liner and then a gel in the middle. And there's also some pads that hold the toe down. For example, if you only had one toe, like a second toe that was cocked up, you could use this to hold it down in place. You could also use taping, very similar to the plantar plate tear. Sometimes if you have pain either in the joint, but most importantly in that big toe joint, the metatarsal phalangeal joint, you can try an injection. It's really hard to inject uh, right into the toe area. For some people, orthotics can be helpful. You can add different padding to reduce pressure on the ball of the foot. It can reduce, uh, you can add a special pad in the inside called a crest pad to take some pressure at the toes. That can all be helpful. And then if none of those non-surgical treatments work, you can uh, consider uh, hammer toe surgery. Uh, one of the simple ones is called a flexor tenotomy. This isn't for everyone. This is more for elderly people or people that has a, have a flexible hammer toe deformity. And uh, what you do is you take a little 18 gauge needle and you cut the tip of the, uh, the, the, the tendon down here and then it just straightens the toe out just by simply cutting it. Uh, very easy, easy, very easy procedure to do if it's flexible. Once again, if it's rigid, it won't work. And it's it's made typically for people that are older that have ulcers on the tips of the toes. And it's a procedure that can be done. It can also help balance with people that develop 
uh, hammer toes over time as they loosen up with cutting that. Now, just be aware if you cut the tendon, sometimes it can cause the toe to go up a little bit, so you have to be careful. Uh, the next kind of down the line would be something called an arthroplasty. This is uh, an example here. You can see a curved toe and a portion of the bone at the proximal joint being removed. Uh, and this here you can see along with the tendon cut, but this is called a, uh, a arthroplasty where you uh, do that at this joint. You can see once again, arthroplasty cutting out some of the bone. And here's an arthroplasty that can be done of a mallet toe. A mallet toe is at the tip. This is the distal uh, interphalangeal joint. A claw toe has both the proximal and the distal involved, and a hammer toe has just the proximal involved where these are straight. So those are the three types of toes. And uh, once again, fixing this, you can cut out a portion of the bone as well. Now an arthrodesis is more of a permanent option. You can take out a joint surface on both sides and you pin the toe in the proper place. That's gonna help it so it doesn't come back. You can also pin sometimes through the metatarsal head based on uh, your symptoms. If you have a toe that needs a plantar plate repair and you can also take the tendon down here, one of these flexor tendons and swoop it up on top. That's called a, a flexor tendon transfer. And I'm going to put some more information here. You can link. If you want to learn about a flexor tenauti, I'm going to put an article here. You can look at that article. And also, I'm going to put some information about uh, a flexor tendon transfer if you want to watch a video about that. Hope this was helpful. If you want uh, more resources, I'm going to put uh, more resources that my patients use. And uh, there's a link here for the, the additional resources.